Hello, and welcome to Dolphin's Dive, the weekly strategically-minded Handelabra stream hosted by Logic Dolphin. Handelabra believes in civil rights for everyone and in being as inclusive as possible, so any comments or activity actively working against those goals are not welcome and will not be tolerated. You can follow us at Handelabra Games on Twitch or Handelabra on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. You can follow me personally at Logic Dolphin on Twitch, Discord, YouTube, or pretty much any avenue. Zen was the multiverse, bottom of the ninth, one deck dungeon, and Zen Spirit Island, and one and uh Sentinels of Earth Prime, sorry, are all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. One Deck Dungeon is also available on Switch, and One Deck Galaxy and Horizons of Spirit Island are in active development. You can find more information on those games at handelover.com. So if you missed the Handelover live stream on Tuesday, they did a preview of One Deck Galaxy, John along with Chris Cieslik. I don't remember how to pronounce the last name, but they demoed One Deck Galaxy, and I believe they stated that it's intended to be an early access game. And John has given me permission to stream it, and so I will. So this is One Deck Galaxy, guys. Whee! So I actually haven't played this in about a month or so month and a half I think actually so um, there's been a few updates on the on the uh, alpha build <laughs> since I last touched it but um, hopefully nothing terrible let's see um, this is not random it always starts with plum plum and botanists I like to go random though so let me just pull up a random number generator uh, there's Five homeworlds and five societies. And I am randomly given four, which is going to be Tim Tillowinks. And four again, which is mathematicians. Excellent. Mathematicians are literally the worst. And, <laughs> and uh, the adversary is currently hungry nebula there's no x for this just click i guess uh so i'm just gonna do one to three and it gave me three which is going to be i assume optimization calibrator in alphabetical order or is it duh i'll do optimization calibrator i'm going to assume it's h for hungry is the random order that i'm doing so if you are unfamiliar with One Deck Galaxy, but are familiar with One Deck Dungeon, then this game is very similar, uh, except slightly different. So we have a home world, which is where our starting dice come from, and also where we get a starting tech. And then there's the society, which gives us three... Uh, I forget what they're called, um, milestones. There's also one milestone on the home world. And there's also a uh, attack here as well. And there's also a special rule that we'll follow. So, the Tintillowinks have salvage rights. Roll a heroic die or use attack from an anchorage. I may spend a fleet to calibrate it. And dice in my pool with the value in storage can be used to fill a small box of any color and value. So basically, Putting a die in storage turns all dice of that value into heroic dice, basically. Um, not much else to say. We have four yellow, four pink, and two blue. These are energy, materials, and diplomacy in this game. We have two tech stars, which are used to fund the techs. And we have the adversary here. So... The optimization calibrator, uh, which the way the game works is that this is going to be an ongoing thing we have to deal with. And with the optimization calibrator in particular, it has a memory cache. The optimization, optimization calibrator stores dice during the game. Any dice on the adversary are part of its memory cache. These dice are not returned to the supply during results. Each die placed using the cache input action must follow all restrictions. Black dice count as their own color when evaluating restrictions. And we have some restrictions to start with. You cannot cache a die if there are already at least X dice of its color in the cache. X is going to be the, num the biggest number that's revealed on this card. I'll talk about that later. 
can only cash a die that is higher than all dice of its color in the cache. And when do dice get added to the cache? They get added during an escalate. Sorry, not during an escalate. What am I talking about? Sorry, that's a different adversary I'm thinking about. Um, do, 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 do. As an action, you may move one die from your pool to the adversary's influence. Each influence can hold one die. An influence is basically a means of measuring time. And for each turn, you add one influence to the optimization calibrator, which is basically one card from the deck, sort of. Um, so at the end of each round, uh, if we don't have, uh, let's see, over here, results for each influence that did not have a die, you are overwhelmed once. So overwhelming is a loss condition. If you get overwhelmed, you lose, um, unless you have other things. So I'm just gonna hit play because I think it's easier to just kind of talk about things as we go along. This is not really a tutorial, I'm just explaining things if you've never seen the game before, but let's see. So as you can see here, this is the same numbers that we had before, but now some of these are covered by the adversary tokens. And as you see, like some of these numbers get bigger and then the bottom most one is win. And basically when you confront the adversary, which is when you fulfill the boxes over here, you take the adversary token next to it. You have to work from top down and the lower ones require you to have various uh, federation levels, which are achieved by the milestones. We're currently at federation level one. We need to get to federation level two in order to get to the second confrontation, but we can always do the first confrontation. And remember in the rules that part of the results, sorry, not results, one of the restrictions said we cannot cash a die if there are already at least X dice of its color in the cache. So at base, X is two. So we can't cash a die if there are at least two dice of its color in the cache. If we confront the adversary once, this number becomes three. And so we're a bit, it's a bit easier to cash dice. And we have to cash dice every round, otherwise we get overwhelmed and overwhelm is loss. Okay. So let's do it. Um, so the way the game works is that there's a variety of phases. Start phase, invader phase, not invader phase, adversary phase, I guess. Um, it's kind of described down here. But basically, the uh, starting phase is the adversary phase. And it's when the adversary gets an influence, encounter cards in the galaxy get an influence, and um, other actions that are particular to the adversary occur. And then we get to our phase where we roll dice. This, I think it's technically the gather phase. You gather dice and then you roll the dice. And then your turn consists of placing dice in various places. When you're done, you go to the results phase where you achieve influence on the locations or you beat up the encounters and claim the rewards or the starbase gets stuff. Sounds complicated, so I'm just gonna start playing and you'll understand better. So, thankfully the game does describe things fairly well. Uh, memory cache you've already talked about, actually. So that's cool. Uh, time passes is also a thing. So uh, it says one or two cards are discarded from the galaxy deck depending on the adversary. It's actually one card for each adversary at base level, two cards on the harder side. So if, it, if it's like Sentinels, it's like, you know, standard and advanced. Um, standard is one card, advanced is two cards. I guess I don't have to click don't show again. But um, yeah, adversary influence, one influence gets added to the adversary. Influence is represented by cards taken from the Galaxy deck. So physically, the backside of each card in the Galaxy deck has a uh, one circle and a two circle. So depending on which uh, like orientation of the card determines the number of influence. Going from zero to one influence takes a card from the deck, but going from one to two influence does not because you just rotate the card. Going from two to three influence, you add a card. Three to four, you rotate a card. And that's how that works. So, yeah, and the other thing is that at four influence, they discard their four, the, the four influence, which are the two cards. And we choose three of the cached dice or four if there are 10 or more cached dice and we move them to the pool. So that's part of like the nice thing is you get the dice back, but they do gradually get more and more dice over the course of the game. So 
kind of have to be careful there. Um, those are the cards. Those are the dice. These are the tech stars that I have innately. There are 12 in the supply, but I have two in hand, and that determines the number of techs I can use. I can use both of my techs if I want. Action phase. So yeah, the things you can do in the action phase. Use dice and star-based discs to fill boxes on cards in the discovery zone to claim colonies of techs. Basically like one deck dungeon. Use your techs with tech discs to do a variety of metaphysical things, like one deck dungeon. Use dice in the star base to gain fleets or science. Not quite like uh, one deck dungeon. Uh, the science is kind of like experience in a sense, although you get the experience differently. Fleet is kind of a different kind of resource. And uh, the fleets are counted like influence. So when you gain a fleet, you take a card from the deck or rotate a card based on influence. The science is based on the upper right corner of the card, and so it's either two, three, or four. And you can level up the star base or upgrade the star base by spending science. And these are obtained during the results phase. And there are rules for how to obtain each resource. Uh, fill a confrontation row to remove an adversary disc, take a step toward victory is kind of like it's up here. It's very similar to doing things in like one deck dungeon, like, you know, the uh, dungeon. Uh, dice or boxes, whatever. Use fleets and science to improve and gain dice or gain black ultra tech dice by combining dice. The black dice are similar to one deck dungeon. You can discard two dice to obtain a black die of the lower value. Uh, fleets can be spent to upgrade or sorry, up, up value or down value a die by one. So it's called calibrate is a way of thinking about it. And you can spend three sciences to roll a heroic die, or <laughs> ultra tech die. So that's ways of getting more ultra tech dice. Uh, you're, you don't roll ultra techs innately in this game. There's no like one heroic die to start with. All right. But now we can play around with our dice, yay. So, what do we do here? We have Twenzo Ice Cream is how I've learned this is pronounced. Lutara and Vo. And all of these can be dealt with simultaneously. Unlike one deck dungeon, I can put dice here, I can put dice here, I can. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> but, um, unlike one deck dungeon, there's no consequences because there's no like HP or time. I mean, there is time. But. If there were encounters, you would have a time limit on it. All four of these are locations, so we don't have that issue. But all of these are very similar to One Deck Dungeon. The thing on the left would be if you were to claim it as a colony, which would add dice to your pool. The bottom part is to add techs, which are like skills. And they also have a resource icon in the lower left, and that adds to the resources that you have, which... Um, is used in various texts. Like the Lava Weed Extractor says, for each two fuel that you have, gain uh, Ultra Tech 3. Um, well, if we have zero right now, but if we gain this, we'd have one. Okay, let's play the game. Enough said. Um, early on, I kind of like to upgrade the Star Base because uh, the Starbase itself uh, provides its own kind of resource called Starbase Tokens, and the Starbase Tokens get used on these sorts of things here. Six fleets or eight signs, which are extra things that you'd spend those resources on other than calibrating dice or obtaining ultra check dice. If I want to deploy the sat field to confront the adversary, I would need to have two Starbase Tokens in order to be able to do that but you only have one to start with. And as you upgrade, you gain an additional one per turn. So Starbase uh, Class 2, you have two Starbase tokens. Starbase Class 3, you have three, etc. The other benefit is that the fleet acquisitions become more optimized. Uh, for Class 2, it's one fewer die to get one fleet. For Class 3, there's an additional row for three fleets. And for Class 4, one of the three fleets costs one fewer die, so it becomes easier to obtain fleets as you go. 
sciences are the same. There's two ways to get science, by the way. You can launch a probe at the expense of three dice, or you can study a location at the expense of one die per science on that card, discounted by the number of influence on that. And by the way, that's only for locations, not for encounters. Encounters, you obtain the science if they escalate. So if I want to uh, upgrade this, the easiest way to be spend four dice to get ice cream and then spend the eight science to upgrade. Um, the number of influence here, by the way, determines when you can actually claim the location. So lower numbers are sometimes better, but you might notice that like, while this does say four influence, you can get two influence with this row. This says seven influence, but you can get three influence with this row. So it's not really necessarily an indicator of how fast you can obtain it, but it is an indicator of how much, how many cards you would have to spend. Cause like to get ice cream, you have to spend four cards to get that basically. On the other hand, uh, the other, like we get two tech stars here, two tech stars here and energy and a tech star here. Another thing we could consider is to confront the fiend. Ignore everything else and confront the fiend. Our role's pretty good. That does it. Confronting this takes this from two to three, which means that it's easier to uh, cash dice because we won't, have, won't be as constrained. And furthermore, it gives us an adversary token, which is basically an extra life. If you get overwhelmed, you can spend an adversary token to not lose the game. You do have an ultra tech here though. There's no encounters in the discovery zone, so I might as well do this. Give me a four. That might change things. Not necessarily. I could like do this instead, but that's not really any better. I might want to put that one here. The other one is. Roll a die from the pool, place it in storage, you may spend a fleet to calibrate it. Which, frankly, mathematicians are kind of the worst. Um, oh, this is actually different than it used to be. Um, so, end the results phase with no cards in the discovery zone is actually really easy to get. Like, we could just do this next turn, maybe. No, we only have 10 dice. But we could take ice cream out, and then it gets replaced with a new card. Wait, 2, 4, 6, 10. No, yeah, we can do it next turn, because we have 10 dice in the pool. If we spend all of our dice getting... I guess we do have to spend two on the optimization calibrator. But basically, we can just study all of these, and then we'll end it with no cards in the discovery zone, and that's easy. But having exactly 15 influence at locations is hard. Because uh, right now, what could we have? Because if I have four, we claim this. So it'd have to be three, and six is nine, and three is 12, and two is 14. So we can't even have that with our current setup. I have exactly 11 science and exactly 11 fleet. There are cards I still hoard cards on the star base, which is also hard. Cards in the star base are out of the deck, so when you reshuffle, they're, the deck's thinner. This card dice totaling exactly 66 is also kind of brutal. Mathematicians are annoying, honestly. I think I'm going to leave the one here. I can remove this die. You used to not be able to do that. <laughs> He used to put like a six in here once and the game was like, no, you can't have that six back. And also undo didn't exist at the time. That was pretty rude. Um, so then what do I want? I really don't see a reason to store a die here because it goes away. I, and I'm probably like, I could gamble that this is a three like i roll this store it as a three and then i can place these like here or here but actually it does it breaks the all dice here must have different values clause i 
could get an influence here to make that cheaper to obtain. It would just be one influence next turn, but that seems like a waste. I could get two fleets. And then this die did nothing in the end. Or I could do a probe. And maybe it's a four and we upgrade the starbase. We're also guaranteed to upgrade it next turn if I get ice cream. I definitely don't want to study these twos. I could spend a fleet to calibrate this to a three and then put them all there to get three, but that would actually be the same as getting two there and then using this die somewhere else. To do the study. The die there. Okay. Results phase. All the dice and discs you place during the action phase will now provide benefits depending on where they are placed. Resolution starts with the discovery zone, then the star base, then the adversary. So completed rows on location cards add influence. Encounter cards that are completely filled are claimed, and all dice are returned to the supply after they are resolved. So we get fleets, we spend our dice to get science. Launching a probe gains the top card of the galaxy deck. Did I mention that? I said I think I just mentioned the cost, but launching a probe is you take the top card of the deck and add it as a science card. So it's either two, three, or four at random. You don't know what it is. Studying a location, you spend one die per science that it costs, and you take one of the cards from the location, discounted by the number of influence on it. Hey, that was a four. So I can upgrade. I don't think I need science for anything next turn. It's actually nice that it shows you the preview of that. Oh yeah, and the other thing about the uh, Starbase class is that it influences the probes and the studies. So at base level you can only do one probe. And it costs three dice. At class two, you can do two probes, each costing three dice. At class three, I believe you still do two probes, but they now cost two dice. And at class four, you can do three probes and they cost two dice each. Studying always costs the same until you're at class four, at which point you have a free discount. So studying locations is a lot easier. Well, I kind of like to get to class four right away because then I don't have to worry about fleets or science as much. So I got the uh, adversary disc, and now this is a three. The dice on the adversary's influence are moved to the memory cache for each influence that did not have a die or overwhelmed once. If you are overwhelmed and you have no adversary discs, it's game over. Make sure to give the optimization calibrator enough dice every turn to satisfy its requirements. So now. Yeah, this just says, okay, didn't get overwhelmed. Time passes, don't need to see that, we know that. Influence, yeah. So I'm, not, I'm gonna start hitting Don't Show again because I don't need to see these. I know this game well enough. In fact, when I played the game, I never got those notifications. But yeah, now if I spend all my dice on this, I claim the first milestone. So this roll really doesn't matter. Might as well gain this though, because I don't think there's a reason to not do it. I guess the roll does matter. Because I forgot that I need to spend two dice on this. Actually, it still doesn't matter. Um Actually I forgot about that. I can also see what dice are currently stored here. So by the way, I can't store uh in uh what's it called? The diplomacy one, because there's already a diplomacy one. Dice have to be higher than every previous value, right? Only cache a die that is higher than all dice of its color in the cache. So I can do uh, resources or materials one, and I can do an energy one, 
I cannot do a Diplomacy 1, but I can do a Diplomacy 2. I might have to wait on... I don't really want to wait until, like, I get the dice back. Once there's there's two influence on there, and right once that's four, I get to choose three dice and add them to my pool. But I don't know that I want to wait on that. I guess I could gain influence on these, and then they get a discount. But, like, in terms of, like, total dice spent, I'm spending two dice to gain one influence, which means there's one fewer die to gain it from the study. That's questionable. The best one would be to gain these. But that also... Wait, I don't have the uh, diplomacy for that. I'm fairly sure the correct decision is to do this. Like, always put ones in when you can. Because, like, if you're putting a die in and it's not a one, then you have more restricted values later on. Like, I can still put a two in. Like, I could decide to do a two here. But if I started with a two, I can't actually do a one, can I? So doing that, I have nine dice, but I need ten to study them all. I don't really want to study, like, I could try to study ice cream to try to get a different location that requires fewer dice, but it could be an encounter, and if it's an encounter, I can't study it. I could also choose to, I guess, gain these cards. But again, my diplomacy's bad, diplomacy's bad. Dice there have to be different values. I guess that's theoretically doable. I'm probably looking, looking at these skills, or techs. Gain an ultra tech with value, uh, federation level plus two. Roll an Ultra Tech and gain an Ultra Tech 3 for each 2 fuel you have. Roll a Materials or spend 2 leads to gain a Material 6 and an Ultra Tech 3. Launch a probe. Could consider is fleets, which we have three twos. So I haven't mentioned this, but the icons here kind of designate what you can put in there. So the any, you can put any value there. The equals means that these dice have to have the same value. So I can put two fives there, but I can't do a five and a six. And then the same for the equals down there. All three of those have to be equal. So if I did that, I would have six fleets. But... Is there a remove all button yet? <laughs> I don't think there's a remove all button yet. I think that was requested at one point, and I don't think it's been done yet. I really like this music. I don't know who made it, but it's really nice. Um, what are the other things? I do need to get to 11 fleets at some point. So I guess I could gain six fleets. One die per fleet is the best you can get until you get to class four. 
And then you can spend two dice to get three fleets, so that's 0.67 dice per fleet. So, can't really argue with that. Do this in a probe? Don't get any influence on here, but... I feel like I need to make more progress. These locations aren't really the best for making progress, though, because they don't really give me many dice except for ice cream, but ice cream I can't really get. No identical dice, so this is like... Um, uh, Diplomacy 6 and an Ultra Tech 6 that this has to be. Unless we store a die of a good value, in which case we can do that. Actually, you know what I said about how I wasn't going to calibrate a die? Depending on what that roll is, or not calibrate, store a die. Depending on what that roll is, that could actually get me free influence there pretty valuable. So if it's a 1, that works. If it's a 2, that works. If it's a 5, that works. So I guess I'll roll this. Okay, I don't need to calibrate it. So now the question is, do I actually try to go for this? <laughs> Instead of trying to uh, study it, can I just go for it? Um, that would mean I get the 11 twice, which is actually impossible. I guess I could make these ultra attacks. And then I just have to get 11 next turn. Like, getting these dice is pretty viable. I don't really care about the ultra tech, but I do like the extra dice that this gives. Another thing I should mention... I'm not sure if we can see it. Um... I think you could have seen it on the first page, but when you empty the die the deck, actually, can you see it here? No. When you empty the deck, then you actually get an adversary event, and the event for the optimization calibrator is it's going to add another restriction. But like we're thirty cards in the deck, so we're rather far away. This leaves me with one die left over. I guess that's going to be a fleet, because that doesn't do anything else. Okay. Wait, no. That's not enough. Wait. <laughs> Wait! For some reason I thought 10 was 11. Well, that's awkward. I guess I can spend the fleet. I can't, because that's identical. But... If I do this differently, I got friend you. All right. I don't want to study that. dice in here, but next turn I'm actually going to get these dice back. So I'd actually kind of like to have high numbers in here. So what I could do is do these. And 
then next turn I get these back. I don't have 11, but I could probably have these boxes if I store a die. It's 50-50 that I get a 1, 2, or 5, but I could calibrate it. 3 becomes 2, 4 becomes 5, 6 becomes 5, so that would be 100% if I allow for the cost of a fleet. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, and that's free, so I could actually gain all these cards, but I actually kind of like to have this one. Going for that though does require three dice. At which point I can't gain all three of the others. But I would like the extra dice. Especially the diplomacy, because I only have two to start with. Guess this needs to be calibrated. So since I am gonna get these dice back, I could think about putting these to also get these cards as things. I like the artisanal ultra tech skill. This is really powerful when your federation level is high. Obviously, it's not super good right now. But once I get this milestone, I'll get an Ultra Tech 4 every round. Free probes, quote unquote. This requires a tech star. I don't really care for matter of duplication. thing is I don't think I'm too likely to get Twenso because I mean I could like do this instead actually maybe that's better leave this in the play area get two on Twenso next round I get this Ultra Tech 6 at the very least I can go in the 11 so I just need like a five or six ultra tech for that to work. Or not ultra tech, uh, diplomacy. Not sure if you heard the thunder, my windows open and it was rather loud. I could get like one influence point there and then I only need one more to get that next turn. I guess it's not that bad. I keep wanting to like progress the star base, but I also feel like <laughs> gaining these cards is better. This is where this game's weird because it's like it's not really clear what the correct course of progress is. Like gaining cards gives you more dice, which gives you more options. But upgrading the star base also gives you better, cheaper options here. Texts are fine. Federation levels allow you to confront. Because remember, we still have to confront this later on. But we have to progress our, our things here. The thing is, this one is not doing anything. It could just be the any, but then this five and this one aren't doing anything. I could make this an ultra tech and get one influence there, but I really don't think I'm going to get Flutara. And then Vo, I have nothing for that. I guess I'm just going to get fleets off this then. I'm just going to spend the dice to study these next turn. And I'm going to try to gain these cards next turn, thereby ending the results phase with no cards in the discovery zone, giving me a milestone.
Well, that was a pretty good roll for everything that's not blue. And I don't have to put any dice here. So that's nice. So even though my diplomacy roll was bad, I do get the two for that. And I do have the seven for that. Spend four dice to get those. And then like, what, fleets? Probes? Where are we gonna get four science? We need 10 to upgrade. And we also want to have 11 fleets for the mathematicians. There's nowhere else these ice can go. They're either going in here or they're going to be a probe. So what is more valuable, three fleet or two, three, or four science? science because I like science more I guess you can actually see the cars that are underneath the tintilla winks now you used to not be able to Milestone achieved. End the results phase with no cards in the discovery zone. Oh yeah! And we're discovering for the first time in a while. And we have the Solidarians. Zabfab Mine Company. Ocean One. SS Sunlight. That's a really good roll. We can actually confront this, or whatever. It is an encounter, so we could use this tech. Spend two fleet to add an influence to each location. That's a really powerful skill. Tech, sorry. Really powerful tech, especially because we do have to have 15 influence. And some of these influences are rather expensive, right? Like. Uh, spend three fleets to gain one influence, and then two dice to add two influence. Or you spend two fleets, which usually costs one die, or one die each, so two dice for the two fleets. To add one here, which costs at least two. Add one here, which is a little harder to discern, and add one here, which would have cost three dice. Also, the one the things that have block icons, you must fill the top row before the bottom row. So I can't do the three six before I do the ten. I can't do the three three before I do the three fleets. And this does cost three fleets to get. Um. By the way, you don't know what the fleet cards are because they're face down, but you do know what the science cards are. So spending science, you do get to choose. Spending fleets, you don't. So do I want to get an Ultra Tech die, or do I want to spend two fleets to add an influence to these three? A good question. Also, there's no special rule for encounters, but the special rule is basically that they escalate if they get three influence, and they obtain influence in the... Uh, Adversary phase. We do. We can, yeah, we can spend two twos. I think I can undo if I do this, right? Oops. I think if I look at the discard, I can no longer undo.
You also have to remember we have to put one die here. It could just be a two. Yeah, it could be a two of any color, actually. Probably the diplomacy is the better color, though, because uh, if we run out of energies, we're not going to roll energies, right? So. Might as well get that. There's no reason not to, because we have enough tech stars for all my techs if I want to use them. This is lit up, but it shouldn't be, and I think John said that was a bug. Uh, because all my starbase tokens are over here. We haven't leveled this up yet, right? Kind of weird, because it's actually kind of better for your dice to be organized by value than by color in this game. Um... Can we confront is a question. I think we're nowhere close to that, even if I have the ideal where like this rolls to be a one and then I place those over there. I am at 26 right now. Plus I still have to put one die aside. So I think that's out. I'm gonna put this here. Uh, reset my dice. <laughs> Got messy. Mm -hmm. So I can't do anything here. Can't do anything here. Probably can't do anything there. So yeah, I don't think there's any reason to do this. I'm still not sure about... It has to be this. dice to add three influence is pretty good. It does cut down on my fleets, but I'm gonna do it. So let's... I don't happen to have enough of one color, do I? Or of one value to get the three. Here. Um, let's see, I'm gonna do two probes then. Get three fleets and two probes. study, but I'm gonna farm the influence on here to get the next thing. Unless I want to, like, actually get these. But no, I'm gonna leave them for a sec. Nine science. All dice here must be the same value. So I can do an energy two and material two very easily. Notice I'm just kind of building up the values. Another option is that I put a high value ultra tech in this round because next round I could put three high values of the other three dice because once we get to the four influence. Oh, there's only been nine dice. Oh, but part of it is that if they do get the adversary event, they are going to roll it, because that's actually... All of the cards say that. Roll a die and place it, ignoring rules. It's weird that this one's valued at higher than that one. Something tells me that's wrong, that this is supposed to be... Maybe not. Maybe not. Ignore me. Let's see. 
five here, four here is nine, four here is 13, seven here is 20. So we can get the 15 in some number of turns. We do have to be careful with the influence though. If I do this skill tech, if I do this tech, I do discard one die card from the deck and, and these don't add one. So we'd have two cards left, but we're basically going to get a reshuffle soon, probably. We're probably gonna get the reshuffle. And I do have to be careful because there's only three tech stars and I have four techs, so I have to choose which tech I'm not using, and it's probably gonna be precise calculations. Unless there's a reason to do that. Hey, Licky! Dolphin inspires! I'm gonna go to the one place that is not corrupted by capitalism. Space! <laughs> if you don't know the reference, you are, you're sad. Um. <laughs> I do want to double check that this card is correct. I'm, I think it is. I don't. I played this game enough to have seen all the wrong, wrongly set up cards. I do know there's another one like this that has two twos here and two fives here. You're European, so you don't know. It's actually uh, I think from Space Quest, which is like a 90s computer game. I'm gonna do the Ultra Tech ones. I could actually do this if I wanted. Though this is pretty valuable. So that puts it at four influence. If it adds one, then I claim it, and that gives me a extra diplomacy and another text disc, so I can actually use all four of my skills. Unless I want this one. And I do have two fuels. Problem is that I still have only three tech stars, but five techs now. But you know, I would gain a bunch of diplomacies. Problem is diplomacy doesn't seem like the thing I need more of. You're gonna hear lightning in a sec. Maybe. There's a big flash. Yeah, I don't think you've heard it. It doesn't look like my mic picked it up. Um, <laughs> it's possible my power is going out, by the way. Um, maybe I should wrap this game up. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. It does kind of make it harder for us to get to the 15 milestone. I'm also going to be really mindful of the fact that we're reshuffling soon, and I generally like to make sure that the reshuffle is for as big of a value as possible. Because thicker decks take longer to get through than thinner decks, so I kind of want to get rid of my science. So like, if I were to just like, gain fleets like this, I'm pretty sure that would do a reshuffle. Because I'm putting two cards down on Ocean 1, and then I'm getting a card here on fleets. So that doesn't seem good, but if I put them all here... Probes are bad, but I could use these to buy one of these. I think I want to leave this one for influence farming. Although it's not the best, it's just going to be there because I can keep adding influence. 
this one seems better for influence farming. This one doesn't seem too good because this is a lot of dice to get three, plus that's limited at five. In any case, this costs two to buy, this costs one to buy, this costs two to buy. set aside anyway. They did the reshuffle first. Okay, order of operations is interesting. Alright. Um, good to know. Fair enough. Get that one. So since they already reshuffled, it doesn't actually matter as much. Also, this one was free. Uh, but I want to leave that one. Um... Actually, considering... Yeah, let me go back. Can I go back? The answer is no, I can't go back. I wanted to move one of the dice up, up here. One of the dice up here, because actually I'm not gonna get the maximum value out of these dice, but I guess this is fine. Leave that one, I'm gonna leave that one. We can upgrade. Yeah, we can upgrade. Good night, fishy. leave the big one because the smaller ones add more cards to the deck is my thinking all right so adversary event roll a die from the supply and add it to the memory cache ignoring all restrictions then add this card as a new restriction a black die cannot be cached unless it is at least as high as all dice in the cache so it's an extra roll on that i'm just gonna store i store a black one This skill roll and roll an energy if you have three plants set up to two dice to six. I have zero plants. I can't deal with this encounter because I don't have enough signs. Because I upgraded. Whoops. So I'm gonna do this. And then we'll do this. I'm gonna do this. Also, there's the other rice twin. I said there was one that had two twos and one that had two fives. And all dice there must have the same value. So I could like try something like this. So we're at four, five, eight. We need 15. Puts us at 10. Add one that's 11. Quite good enough. Also, dice to go up there and I think I said I was going to do highest values of these because I'm going to get them back next round. So those dice don't even exist. It's going to be hard to do this next round. I guess actually I don't have to gain influence on this this round because I could just add it with expedition expeditionary force next round. 
This is a lot chiller than one deck dungeon. It is. We're exploring the universe. It should be chill. What about numbers? this one. Two point one thousand are go. So I can do that. I can't do any more there. I don't have any more threes. I don't want to add there. I can't get add that, so the rest of these are going to go over here then. So probes, I can do two, and they cost two dice. And I don't want to add any of these, so there's no studies, so I just want to leave four dice in here at most. So something like that. Maybe you'll have to ask to play off stream sometimes. You can play off stream all you want. Unless you're saying you want to play with us off stream. As someone who's unfamiliar with One Deck Galaxy, how different is this? Hey, I've been talking about this all game. <laughs> Well, the dice rolling is very similar. You have yellow dice, you have pink dice, you have blue dice. Although in this game, these are energies, materials, and diplomacy. You also have tech stars, which are a way of funding your techs, which are the equivalent of skills. I assume you mean you're familiar with one deck dungeon, by the way. Uh, normally in one deck dungeon, your techs or your skills would require dice, but in this game, they require tech stars. Uh, the Main difference is that obviously you have these four doors, quote unquote, that are opened right away and you can deal with them all at the same time. And there's no real consequences for not covering a square. Although encounters, you do uh, gain influence on. Influence basically means there are face down cards next to this card. And for, for locations, which are the blue cards, when they cap on the influence, then you gain the card. For encounters, if they cap on influence, then a bad thing happens, which depends on the adversary. The adversary is kind of like the fiends of One Deck Dungeon, in a sense, as they have like a persistent effect, and you have to put dice to deal with them, but at the same time, they're basically like the dungeon challenge squares also as well, so I don't know, it's kind of a hybrid there. Science is, is sort of like experience, but not really. Fleets are a different resource altogether, similar to influence in terms of like how they're of how they are. Um, and what else? Um, I thought and I forgot what it was. There are no potions in this game. So I got a lot of dice, so I can do a lot this turn. Can I confront? Yes. But maybe I want some of these dice to go over here. seen an entire sit drink a potion at once. True. Alright, I'll be right back in a second. I'm gonna grab a new drink.
Okay, I'm back. It took a little longer because I was talking to my brother's friend. Okay, so I'm inclined to spend the Starbase token here. I don't see why I wouldn't do that. It's fine. Get that. Let's get that. So all dice here have to be the same value, but let's see. So I could also spend three fleets here. And then like technically this works for that. Does that get me the 15 if I add one? So four, seven, 10, 11, 12, 13. I only need two more. But I need to get two more without, like... Oh, that's actually... I have to get two more without getting one here, because once I do this, which I probably will do... So we're at 13. I need to get two more, but if I add one here, then I claim this card. And this has to be end of turn, have 15. So I can try to get the two fives, but then that claims that card, so I can't do that. And I can't do this two because I have to get the one first. So it has to be the three fleets and then the two and the two. And so doing that, I don't have any more fleets, so I can't calibrate or do other things, but I can, like I could roll a die and hope that it's a one or a two. But it's gonna cost an extra die. I could create a heroic two by spending, or sorry, an ultra tech two by spending an ultra tech die, which is really weird. I guess we better do it this way. But like that would cover the squares there, and that would work. Seems weird. By the way, looking another thing is that there are milestones here, which is another an analog of levels. And the milestones are determined by the society, which is the mathematicians, and the homeworld, which is the Tintillowinks. Tintillowinks provide one, mathematicians provide three. And in order to beat the game, you have to get at least three of these four milestones at some point. So that's why I'm trying to set this up, because I have to do at least one of the, I have to do at least two of these three now, basically. And 15 influence is pretty hard, but this is actually an errata that is not in physical yet. Shh. It originally was have exactly five influence at three locations, and it was terrible. Still terrible, but less terrible. <laughs> I would do this one, except I don't think it's... It's a 33% chance that it actually lands on one or two, and so I don't want to do that. <laughs> so I think I'm just going to do this one. So if I math that right, five, five... Hey, I achieved five at three locations accidentally. <laughs> Go me. I'm good at this game. And I guess just get all the fleets back. That works for me. Oh, I didn't finish this. Oh, okay. Kind of forgot to fill that out. Uh. I mean, I filled it up and then I stole some of the dice and then I forgot to replace them. But it still worked out. Thank you for the warning. Yeah, I think this is better. Although I'm going to be hitting the dice limit on energies. 
I have to leave these. All right, milestone achieved. I am at adversary, or sorry, Federation level three, so I can do this third level here. We have another set aside event. We're doing pretty well though. We have two adversary tokens. This is now an Ultra Tech 5. I have to set aside one die, probably a 3. I could maybe try to set aside an Ultra Tech. Let's see what this is, because I can do all of those, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't set that aside because. Oh, it's up here. Black die cannot be cashed on this at least as high as all dice, so. This can't be done. I can do that one. Or I can do that one. I would rather not do this one, because otherwise I'd only roll five dice, five yellows next turn. That one seems better. Two fleets gets me this and this for free, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, these skills aren't really good. Sorry, these techs aren't really good. This would increase the die by up to two, but I don't have enough text to do all of these. I guess I don't need to really do precise calculations as much, hypothetically. I could just gain these as science, but that seems like a waste when it's just like, we're that close to getting these. I'm still gonna do this. Maybe I gained this. It's for science. I could try to confront again. Tech six is hard, but I guess I could do precise calculation. I said I'm not, but it, like that feels like a better way of filling in the five square than anything else. Maybe even the six square. The ideal is that I roll a one, so I have as many dice for the forty-four as possible. fine. Of course, I assumed that I can even hit this. And I barely did. actually better for me to overspend that. It's kind of really hard to tell the number here. I'm sure this is going to be improved upon, but like 44 is really hard to tell right now. But, oh, and even when I move this out, it screws that up so badly. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my goodness gracious. I think there's also dice on top of dice right now. But it's correct, so it works. Alright, I have lots of dice. The problem is, I can't roll all the dice.
Okay. Roll a die, and also I must spend a tech star to cash a die. That's kind of brutal, but we do have enough tech stars. I just don't have all the skills I would like to have now. Techs. I keep calling them skills because of one deck dungeon. But I need to confront one more time. In order to do that, I need to level up one more time. So how do I level up? Do I have 66? The answer might surprise you. Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-three, twenty-eight, thirty-three, thirty-eight, forty-three, forty-seven, fifty, fifty-two, fifty-four, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. We don't, but we're pretty close. So I can do this now, but I do have to be careful because either I set aside dice for this, or I don't. <laughs> I could do this. I still do this? No. And now since I'm spending it, I have to actually undo in order to get it back. And even spending one of those threes makes it impossible because 66 is hard. So I could spend two adversary tokens and get overwhelmed twice, but spend the extra lives and not put dice in here. And in so doing that, I can activate this to get the 66. Another option might be to get the 1111 because that's probably easier. That requires me to get all of these, three, six, eight, nine, eleven, and then a four, which could be two twos. Because obviously probes are random. So how would that work? very easily because I have an excess of dice. But I don't want to get any more science. I have to actually have 11. I could put influence somewhere instead, but I kind of don't want to do that. Influence on there means I'm taking cards from the straw pile, and I kind of don't want to do that anymore. I have all the dice, I have all the text. There's kind of no reason to add anymore. Like, dice aren't going to do anything at all. So I think I'm just not going to do all the things. I guess tech stars are useful because of this, but I mean... I mean... Okay, 11-11. So we can theoretically win if I roll good enough. Maybe we wait till next turn because I can take dice from the optimization caliber. I'll 
Also bear in mind I have to spend three tech stars here, so I'm only getting one tech this round unless I spend all my tokens. I don't really want to do. I think I could just do this. Like, in fact, I can gain an Ultra Tech Six and put it in the pool. And then the fives aren't too good because of the sixes. I could calibrate it. Which, I mean, we're almost shuffling anyway, so might as well, honestly. Oh, I can't do two sixes, duh, because of that. But I can do a five and a six. Right, there's only two of them. I'm capped at four. Okay, so that's fine. Okay, so that's handled. And I guess the rest will just be gain science to level up. You have to be careful because, like, reshuffle. But I don't think it matters. I could just gain all of these. 4, 8, 11, 13. I have one left over. Oh, but this discards three of studied, so I could just do a probe instead for that one. Two probes? <laughs> Maybe that's overkill. I wanted... Can I can I have this not be auto? <laughs> Two, four, six, nine, twelve. aren't doing anything. <laughs> it is a lot of dice. It's only 10 dice, though. It's pretty interesting. Mm, there's no chance. This is a 1, though. No. I mean, it's a 50% chance I could spend two fleets to calibrate it down to a 1. It was not a one, but it is a four. I could do this. And now that's done. And then I can store that. Yay! Did that for no real reason because the game was already won, but get rid of the last encounter, because why not? Your civilization has fought off the threat and formed a federation that will bring prosperity to your corner of the galaxy. Yay. So that was that. That's 8.30. Social media be gone. Cool. All right, let's do another one. That one took like 30 minutes to explain the setup, and then I walked away for a bit, so I might be able to fit another game in. Let's see, randomly, I have Plum Plim, 
and explorers. Which I think is the is the uh, recommended setup, but that's what random number gave me. And for the adversary, we have Nebel Woobers, which is also the one that you should. Or no, it's not. Hungry Nebula is. I wish you knew exactly how many points you had. If you hover over the points without clicking on it, it will, sh it will show exactly how many you have. I have exactly 84,284. If you're on mobile, I don't know how you can do it. But if you hover over it with your mouse on desktop, you're good. So this is going to play differently. Plum Plims. Um, we can move any number of influence from one location to another. And we can return numbers of dice to gain that number of Ultra Techs. We can also count resource icons in the discovery zones as explorers, by the way. Count resource icons into the discovery zone as if they were attached to your home world, so we have free resources. And our milestones are to have five of one resource, four each of two resources, three each of three resources, and also 16 science. So it's going to be a different game. And also, Nebel Woobers. Um. Duh, duh, duh. The Nebel Woobers escalate, they gather the dice and uh, tech stars for their icons and roll them, gather ultra tech dice in place of missing uh, energies, materials, and diplomacies. Each die that is value X or higher, and all gathered tech stars are gathered or added to their hoard. Twice per turn, we may make a purchase from the hoard, spend six science for all energies, four fleets for all materials, three influence from locations for all diplomacies. Five tech stars for all ultra techs, or dice of value 20 plus for all tech stars. Half rounded up, go to your pool, the rest of the supply, and roll the dice. And if the adversary has three influence at the end of their turn, discard three influence, and the Nebel Woobers gain a colony from the deck, otherwise escalate. So they escalate frequently. And we also have an additional wash condition at the start of the adversary phase. You are overwhelmed that the Nebel Woobers have at least twice as many colonies as your Federation level. So, have to be very mindful of that. And it's actually very easy to lose that. So. Okay, because when they get an adversary event, they get a colony, and yeah. But dice of value three or higher are added to their supply, so they got an energy and the materials. We have two encounters right out the gate. Move influence, return up to two dice, gain that many ultra tech threes. So we can get the unseen. If I do this, and this, and this. Actually, this would be better. And then I get an ultra tech three that way. Now it gives me two tech stars or a skill for two fleets, which free fleets are good to get the energies back. I can't get this this round, but these are really high value sciences. On the other hand, You've Got Mail is probably one of the easiest for science ones because it's really easy to, like, these have to be different values, but and I don't actually have a six right now because I did this, but if I move this over here for a sec, like, I can very easily get the three science, the three influence that way, and then I can move those three influence to a different location, and that might make it easier to get new locations. So I might want to leave that one. That said, I do think I can't justify that this round. What if 
I study this, and I gain that. That's fine. We don't get this next round either because I'm only at six signs, but maybe the round after that. I think I'm going to gain the two fleets because three fleets are nice. It does mean I get less tech stars. So if I were to confront, this would make it harder for them to add dice. That wouldn't have made a difference that round anyway. So for instance, if I had three influence here already, I can move them up here and then gain this card this round with zero effort. Unfortunately, I don't have a five, but I could do six, four, three, one. No, I could do three, two. Costs one extra die than six, five, four. But six, five, four is the combination that's really good for You've Got Mail. Three dice for three influence is a really good ratio. I don't think it's worth trying to fill up both of these squares, by the way, because 6x4 fills this one, gets you three influence. 3 to one fills this one, gets you only one more influence at the cost of three dice. So, I'm going to try to make sure I do 6x4 there. But I do need more science for Terra Inferma. Let's get that. And probably replace these two. You can't send envoys. You can't blockade. Blockading is actually pretty easy though. So I do need to get the seven signs, so I'm not gonna upgrade the star base just yet. Can I get to 16 signs? That is not happening because I need 10 more. I think I want to leave Hematib. Also, yeah, we really want to like add cards as fast as possible because we need resources. Um, and they're gonna escalate next turn, or not escalate? They're gonna gain a colony, and they're going to be at one colony. So we are kind of limited on time. We need to gain a federation level quickly. I think I'm going to focus on the science for the time being. And use this to add things. Let's take Hematib. Can I look at this card? No, I can't. Um... This is like almost exactly the same as this one. I don't remember if it was Futara or not. It wasn't, it was the adversary, never mind. Or sorry, it was an encounter. I'm gonna leave this, so I'm gonna spend two dice on this and three on a probe, which leaves one left over, but that's a waste. But I can't do two probes anyway. Can't gain influence somewhere else, some other way. Okay, I guess that is what it is. Diplomacy and one more tech star. So 
So I could move these influence over here instead. I think I want, I think I want the tech star more. And I also want to gain this. Do that by using the Ultra Tech 3. So how many dice do they have? One, one, one of each. It's not worth spending for. I have six, five, four again. I actually can't get this at all. I mean, I guess if I use that three, but then I have to get, well, I guess two threes would do that. more energies for blockades, so I guess we're gonna get the bow. That's the total seven, unfortunately. We don't have seven. Spend. Um, no more text left. Two dice left over. We could study this. We could also gain it as a thing next turn. I think I just gain fleet. Really annoying. Two dice for one fleet is really expensive. this, right? I mean, three plants is easier to get with the explorers than other societies, because you add up these. But more dice is also good. Also, I want less text. Uh, especially because you're going to be stealing text. Unfortunately, it's still all of those. Boo. Okay. You don't have five fleets. I don't think we have those. Do we? The answer is probably not. I could spend an ultra tech here and then other stuff, but I think I'm not gonna bother because I want to get more stuff. So move those, reset that. Six five four. Move to here. And now we really want to get a milestone. We need it next round, otherwise we lose. At the start of the adversary phase, you're overwhelmed if the Nebel Weavers have at least twice as many colonies. So no, we have two rounds left. If I need to get the 16 science. I think that's easier than the others. Um, because this is contributing to fuel, this is contributing to plants, these are contributing to crystals, so I can get 3-3. Three, 3-3-3, three, 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 that is. 4-4, four, four, I'd have to lose both of these and hope to get a plant and a fuel. 5 of 1, I'd have to lose these and get 2 fuels or 2 plants. I mean, I'm going to gain this as a resource, so there's going to be a new one added. If it's a crystal, then we get the milestone, but it's not guaranteed. So if they're to consider, consider is to try to gain Ocean 1 next round. But now I think I want to spend as much to get science as possible. Although studying that is bad. That discards three cards. So if I put two influence on that, 
I could actually gain it this round instead of Kimatib. It's probably better because I have more fuel than I have crystals. Now let's actually... here. So then an Ultra Tech 3 fills that. And then I can do study study probe. Oh, but I can't actually because I need to spend something here. So actually I don't get that. do one probe. Why is that saying partial effect? I don't know. I wish I was getting more out of this. I could study this, but I don't want to. Upgrading. Artisanal Ultra Tech is back. This one, studying this one probably, making this one, my energies are bad. I could pay for that, but I don't want to. Accelerated study or gain accelerated study. Do this plus move the influence. Get the three influence back. the tech star for that so get free probes accelerate the science better that way and then study hematib do a probe The probe is a four, then that's good. Otherwise, I don't gain the federation level still. So two and three is five, so I have nine dice left over. Or sorry, four dice left over. Hashtag math. Um, 
I'm still gonna have one left over. That's not a four. I could study that to make sure I get that. It's fine. They're not losing right away. Okay, I got the milestone. Four of three, four of two resources. Four fuel, four plants. All right, all right, all right. So the defeat is at the start of the adversarial phase, you are overwhelmed if the naval wilbers have at least twice as many colonies as your federation level. They have two colonies. Federation level is two, so two times two is four. So if they have at least four colonies, we lose, but they have a pending event, which is going to add to their colonies. So we're not out of the woods yet. Me artisanal ultra tech. Gives me the three back. I can't gain the influence on here though. I'd rather just study it anyway. Make sure I get that Federation level. Actually, I just get it. <laughs> Which is good because now Probe Armada has leveled up and now I get Heroic 4s. Ultra Tech 4s, that is. Dice must have different values though, so. And then I have one left over! Yay! It does nothing! consider getting that one, but that doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Wait. Oh, this has to go there. Okay. So now this doesn't do anything. Oh, read. Yay. 
I can upgrade again. Actually, I don't want to upgrade again because I want to leave four in there for this. But I do have accelerated study. There's only a percentage chance of it being a four. I think I'm gonna leave it. Add an uh, energy, material, diplomacy, tech star to the horde, and then gain this as a colony. So yeah. look at how many dice they have now. Probably need to do something about that. We still have yet to confront the adversary, by the way. They're rolling an ultra tech because they don't have enough diplomacies. Hey, we have five of one resource. We can win the game. <laughs> but we're also rolling only eight dice. Okay, I guess you have to do something about that. Okay. Yeah, I guess we could spend the influence. Fleets. We can only do this the two times because twice per turn you may make a purchase, so I can't get the uh, energies back. Okay. So this is a six now. That's pretty nice. That was a three. have influence to move. Also, my energy is really bad. But it probably still works. Two fours do it. We turn up to three dice, gain that many fours. Also consider this at some point. We don't have the fives for that, though. We have the six for that. I guess I'm not doing that. That's pretty good with all the plants I have. Increase five of my dice by two. Because we just need, like, pips to win, right? Sort of, not really. Since pips, we need dice to do that, but... Um... Now this has to be four. to keep making progress on that. Um, energy is sciences. X stars is pips. They have no ultra techs right now. This is influence. We're good on the influence because of you've got mail. We're good on the fleets because of rapid deployment. Sciences are not really solved, but we can study those. That's probably fine. Also gonna upgrade the star base. Need six science, so maybe we're not upgrading the star base. Six, right? Yeah. My hard drive is almost full. Probably because of this recording, isn't it? That's sixty gigs, I'm fine.
now we're gonna start confronting, right? Right? Another you've got mail. This one's a little less good. 6-4 gets me two influence. I-3-2 gets me two influence for another three dice. This actually combos with Pro Vermada. It gives me a lot of Ultra Tech sixes. X Infinity. Rainbow Projector for Pride Month. Okay. Well. Partial effect because I don't have these. I guess I should probably gain these two. Get rid of all the crap that's in the horde. I don't need all the sixes this round, but I mean, you don't always need a six, but then you have it. All right, we confronted. We don't have a four. We have a four here. four for that one. I also don't have a five. Um, we could just study. Um, we have 11 dice, so it's only two studies. Unless I don't gain the influence this round, but why would I? I want to probably leave this one, because it seems like a good one, in which case I could put dice in there if I can. I can't do heroics in that one, though. No. Woe is me. That works. Could spend three science and two fleets on that. I think I'm going to leave it. They gain the Miracle World, which adds one of each resource icon. That's annoying. They also gained this. Okay, but they're not rolling dice this round. And I got another milestone, yay! This is why I like the mathematicians were so bad, because I had like so focused on getting these milestones. <laughs> but the explorers were like, I got it accidentally! I got five plants because I added a plant there. That's cool. Yeah, explorers are pretty cool. Return up to four dice, gain that many Ultra Tech Six. I don't need this anymore. That's cool. can be sixes, right? No, sorry, no, it'll increase by two. Also, I have to be careful that there's enough ultra techs.
It really doesn't matter, honestly. I guess get that if I want. If I do this, I don't have a four anymore. <laughs> I guess it's fine. Oh no, I do get a four. I can do one more die. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. Six, five, four. Probably this four is better. Six, 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 twenty. All right, and then add all of those. Still want to level up. We can level up this at this point. Um. I don't want to add too many, like, leaks, though, because, like, we're going to reshuffle. There's only 12 cards left in the deck, so I'm just going to leave that. That's an overspend. It's definitely one of those games where we were losing for a while, and now all of a sudden we're just like crazily winning. However, they just took five of my diplomacies. We're gonna, they're gonna, we're gonna, blah, blah, blah. We've gotten pretty lucky that they've only gotten one tech star, because tech stars are usually a problem with this adversary, but we've gotten lucky. Because we still have our six, but next round we're gonna start losing our tech stars. One more round and we win. The players must do two of the following. Exile a colony, exile a tech, exile two starbase discs, or add an influence to the adversary, then the adversary gains this card as a bonus colony and that has two tech stars. So that's kind of mean. Um, I don't think we need like rapid deployment anymore, honestly. <laughs> nor do we need accelerated study, but I think like the fleets are less of a problem than the sciences. Exile a colony. Ch -ch -ch -ch. 
check it? Can I check it? Yeah, I can. Like, we're only gonna have five tech stars this round anyway, so we might as well exile Bo. they have more because they get gain two more. We only have three. Well, that's just mean. But I can't click all the buttons right away. I could spend 20 pips to buy four or five tech stars. I don't need accelerated study. I don't need floral ingenuity, so I already have the, what I want. All's good. Let's get one more die back. And then let's get one more die back. Might as well. Those dice aren't doing anything. skills I wanted to use. I guess I'm losing because I didn't get to use all the skills I wanted to use. That's a shame. Get to do that still, yay! Your civilization has fought off the threat and formed a federation that will bring prosperity to your corner of the galaxy. You have stayed one step ahead of the Nibelur colony fleet, building a successful federation. Yay! Yep. So the mathematicians game was so much harder because I had to focus so much on numbers. But the explorers was like, lol, here's a federation level. Lol, here's another federation level. Lol, here's a third federation level just for you. Okay. Might as well just do that. Sure, why not? Why not? Alright, well, that does wrap up this week's of Dolphin's Dive. Hope you enjoyed the preview of One Deck Galaxy. Be sure to check out the other streams you have on this channel. Every Friday at 4 p.m. is Luck with Seamus with Seamus the Hug Monster. Every Saturday, not Saturday, Sundays now at 1 p.m. is Spirit Island Sundays with usually myself and usually Seamus. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. is Handelobber Live with John, usually demoing content before it is publicly available such as some of the promos for or the variants of the Sentinels of Earth Prime Heroes or the Horizons of Spirit Island Spirits, which has also been seen on Spirit Island Saturdays, or Spirit Island Sundays, sorry. Or the One Deck Galaxy content, which was first showed this Tuesday and also shown tonight. But maybe you'll see some other stuff appear on that stream as well. Be sure to follow us at twitch.tv slash games to watch the live streams or to the Handelobber channel on YouTube to watch past videos. Also follow me at twitch.tv slash logicdolphin if you would like to support me personally. Handelobber products include Sentinels of the Multiverse, Bottom of the Ninth, One Deck Dungeon, and Zen Spirit Island, and Sentinels of Earth Prime, all available on Steam, iOS, and Android devices. One Deck Dungeon is also available on Switch. And One Deck Galaxy and Horizons of Spirit Island are in active development. Find more information on those games at handelobber.com. But for tonight, I am done. Have a good night, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. Peace. <laughs>